today we're continuing with graduation theme. I'm going to show you how to make this fan here. Uh, the fonts I have uh, in this project are Impact, Garamond, which are two core fonts. If you have Windows, you should have them. Um, fonts I got from Defont.com are Varsity and Hatterline. You don't need these fonts. If you want to use the same fonts I am using, you can go and download those. Um, we're going to start off here by going to our page setup. You see here I pretty much have it already set up to what I'm going to use. I'm going to print at home just on a regular inkjet printer. So I have it set to letter, which is right here. It automatically does um, the width and height. And I like to have mine set to portrait orientation. Now registration marks. I also have them set up. I'm going to show you what yours might be set at. Um, so I clicked restore defaults. You'll see it, it's at 0.5 for thickness. What I like to do is increase that thickness. When I do that, you're going to see these lines here increase in thickness. And what that does is that gives the machine a little more help when the sensor is trying to find these registration marks. What these lines do is the sensor reads it and it tells it pretty much where your design is. It helps it find it on the page. So I increase that to one. Inset is 0 0.625. I'm fine with that because my design fits in there just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get started there. Let me go ahead and close this. So we're going to start by, I'm going to do the rectangle first, the back rectangle. So I'm going to go over here, go into the rounded rectangle, and I'm going to select that. Now you can create it the size you want by stretching it out. I sometimes just quickly make it, and then I'll go and type it up there so I don't waste too much time moving, moving the box around trying to get the right size. As long as you have it selected here, you'll have this toolbar that pops up, and you'll show, see the dimensions here. Now width, I want it to 5. And then I'm going to go over to height and I'm going to set that to seven. I want this at five by seven. Now this is the entire, uh, the black part right here, not including the side letters. So that's that part there. Um, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to type my, my graduate and my 2021 out right now. So let's go ahead and go over to the text panel here. I'm going to click on it going to click anywhere on the page so we're going to type I'm going to do cap locks graduate oh, I hit enter there so I click away from it and then I go to click on the text style here I'm going to change that to uh, varsity team so I'm going to click on this again to highlight it and I'm just going to type varsity team I have two different varsity fonts on here. I want to use team on this. You can use regular if you want, doesn't matter. So I'm going to add a color to this. I'm going to go over to the, um, the color palette here, click on it, and I want this to be red. You can make it whatever color you'd like. So I'm just going to do this so I can size it right now, and then I'm going to move it out, out of the way in a bit. So let's size it up. <clears throat> I don't like it too close to the corner because you see how the rounded and then this sharp edge, I, I, it's just a personal um, preference of mine. I don't like to put it too close because I just feel like it's, it's a little off. So I like to kind of start the bottom of the lettering about close to where that curve ends. Once again, personal preference. You put yours wherever you want. So I'm going to select both and I just want to center it. So I can use these tabs up here, but I'll go over to the right just to show you these. They're here as well. So the transform panel, we're going to hit center and this is going to center it. So it's centered perfectly now. So now we have that there. I'm going to move on to doing the 2021. So let's go ahead and click on the A again to add text. So two, enter, zero, enter, two, enter, one. So basically that's our 2021. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change the font type to impact. I'm going to stretch this out. Now one thing I don't like is the space between each line here. So when I hit enter, it typed each number on a different line. So I'll go over to the line spacing and that's in that same textile panel. And I'm going to adjust the line spacing. 
Uh, just play around with it until you get it to where you like where it's at. Let's let me go down to 80. I want it closer. Let's try 75. Uh, I think I'll go down to 70. I want a little bit closer. I think that's fairly decent for me. I like the space. I don't, I don't want it to space too far apart. I'm also going to add an offset, which is like a shadow layer. So it'll fill in those parts there. So I'm going to stretch this out a little bit just to get it close to the same height. I don't make it exactly the same height because we're, we're going to add that shadow layer and that shadow layer is going to add some some height to this. So um, right now I'm going to add color now. So I'm going to go to the color palette and I'm going to add color. Let's go with this red here, which is the same red. And then I'm going to add that shadow layer, which is the offset. So for the offset, you go to the star. And once again, I have my item selected still. So go to the star. I'm going to add an offset. See, it adds that layer. Um, this is defaulted at 0.125. And I think I'm OK with that. So I'll keep that as is. Um, and. I'll apply that. So now we have the shadow, the outline, we have everything here. So if you look at the sizing right now, this here is almost the same, um, about the same level as this. It might need to come down just to make it even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure both of the both of these are selected because I want them to size, stretch and size at the same time. So I think I'm okay with that. It looks like it's about where it needs to be. So now I'm going to move this out of the way. I know it's the right size. Now I just want to move it out of the way because now what I need to do is combine these so that they're all one that that back black part is all one piece. So I'm going to take this and you can use your arrow key or you can use your mouse. I'm going to go with the arrow key on the keyboard and I'm going to click over. And as long as your design overlaps, like you see here, if you were to click weld, it would connect it together. I don't want it at this point. I want to go further because I want this one to be connected. Otherwise, this part's not going to be connected and it's just going to flap around on you when you fan yourself. So I'm going to keep going until that that part of the one overlaps. And you see there it's overlapped. You can move this guy out of the way if it's bothersome to you. Let's go ahead and do that. So now all that's all set. So we're going to select both. We're going to right click and we are going to weld. Now we have that. So if you were to move this back in, it goes in there perfectly. Move that back in. So now you got your graduate there. Now, remember we started off with the five by seven box. Normally, what I would have done, which I just got ahead of myself, I would have just did an offset. But now we have to draw a new box again. And I want, once again, I want that five by seven. And that was just my mistake. So good thing we went with the common size so we know what it, what it is. So we can easily make another box. So that's basically the size of this here before we welded it. Um, what I want to do, the reason I'm making this is because I want to do a internal offset so I can get these boxes. Rather than trying to make it and size it up with the uh, arrow key, I'm just going to do this and do an internal offset. So we'll go internal offset. Once again, click on the star first, click internal offset. It's automatic, automatically set at 0.125 and I'm going to apply that and you see it added that inner box. That's what I want to bring over here. And I'm going to move this graduate out of the way again. And you see it goes all the way down to the bottom 
and I don't need it to go all the way down to the bottom. This is why I like to add color. It makes it easier to select. Let me just add color so it selects a lot easier. Actually, make it white. I'll make it gray so we can pick that up. So we can drag that up. I really want this to be white, but I'm not going to um, change it to white just yet because it's hard to see. And then we'll position this back in here and we'll see if this is the right size for us. What I like to do is make sure that I have a even looking space under and above it. So I think I'm okay with this right here where it's at. So this would be my white layer. Now I'm going to go and change it to white. And that's by going to the color palette here and changing it to white. Now you see I have another internal offset which would be the box where the picture is. So while clicking on this, that's selected. So I'm going to make an internal offset of that box. It's just basically making internal offset is just putting a box within a box within a box. That's what it's doing. If I did regular offset, it would go the opposite direction. It would put a box outside of a box outside of a box. So this is just the inside version. So this one, I'm going to color it. Actually, I'm not going to color it. I was going to color it yellow for visual, but we won't do that right now. So this is where the picture is going to go. So we're going to drag in the picture. Actually, not drag in. We're going to merge the picture in. Let's see. Let me go to where I have it saved. Well, we're going to go with this picture here. Now we're going to do crop. We're going to crop this picture out. Basically what that is, is whatever shape you put above the picture, it'll cut that picture out to that shape. So we want this, um, this rectangle to be above. Right now you see it's going behind. You see the red lines there are behind the picture. It's behind. So we want to select it, right click and bring to front because we want this in the front so it will cut the picture out to that shape. So we're going to place that there and I'm okay with that. So then we're going to make sure both are selected. Select the picture and the box and then go to this transform panel. It's the two shapes that are intersecting. Click it, the modify panel. I call it transform panel. I'm sorry, it's the modify panel. Um, go and click crop and then it cropped the picture out to that shape. So now you have this that you can drag in there. I'm going to make the black, the back black for visual part of my design. And you see it covered the, the graduate part. Just during the process, the way I did it, um, the graduate ended up behind. So you wanna uh, right click on that and make sure that back that black part is sent to the back so click send to back so now the black part is all the way in the back and these are everything else is stacked on top so then I'll bring this in and you could do the same thing with the the 2021 you can right click on it and then bring it to front and it overlaps the image. If you don't like that, then you could just undo that. Now, my next thing I want to add here is I want to add this little element here just because I feel like it adds just a little bit extra. So I'm going to just type that out. So I'm going to go to the text, uh, text option again, select it, just click anywhere on your page and type. So I had cap locks on, so congrats. And then I'm going to go over to this panel here. You see it's still, the cursor's blinking, that's it's still in edit text mode. So I usually click away from there and then click on it. There's probably a better way, but that's just what I do. So click here for textile and I wanna use hatter line. And then I wanna make that red. So I'm gonna click that color panel and then click red. 
and I like to add an offset so I'm going to add an offset you see this is still selected so I'm going to add an offset add that shadow layer I don't need it that big for these um, small letters so I'm going to go with uh, let's try 0.8 maybe a little bit smaller that's 0 0.05 you'll see me clicking on these um, the corner style and that's just because sometimes when you type the number I'm like I'm gonna take it back to I'll do point two and you see it doesn't show you what it looks like so I just tend to click on this and then it'll show you what it looks like so if you edit the number and you need to see what it looks like just click on one of these and it'll show you so let's go back to 0 0.05 once again see it's not showing me and I might not be ready to like apply it yet so I might just want to see what it looks like that's why I use these that's just a, a habit that I have um, something you can do if you want so I, I'm fine with that I like that small offset now I'm going to add color to that so I want that to be white so now you can see the um, lettering. I'm going to group these. So select both, right click, and group. The reason I do that so that if I move it, that top layer, the red lettering doesn't come apart from the background. Now this you can place wherever you want. You can size it how you want. If you want to put it here, you want to put it on this side. You could do anything you want with it. Um, from here, you're pretty much set on this. That's the design. You could probably go a little bit smaller. You don't even have to add this. This is just an extra touch. So I'm going to just group this and I'm going to move it out of the way. Well, I didn't want to group the. Uh... Okay. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Now we're going to work on the back part. This is optional and this is fairly easy. Actually, I don't even need to show you much of this because uh, it's just basically text typing. Let me do it quickly. I'm going to add another rounded rectangle. This is just to, that back part is just if you want to add some, an extra touch to it and also cover up the, the back part, the stick um, where you glue it. Some people don't like that. Some people don't care. I would say use the thickest paper you can find so it doesn't flop around too easily. But if you have that back part, it's going to be extra sturdy. Once again, we know this part was uh, a five by seven. So that's what I'm going to make this, this square uh, rectangle. Sorry. So I'm going to go again, five by seven. So now we know it's the perfect size. So for the back part, so we can, set it on there you it's it's going to cover the back part perfectly and then you just want to go and add start adding your your text to that um this is what i chose to put class of 2021 this is um uh, varsity this is impact this is where garamond uh garamond came into place um this is graduate name you just type their name uh, put the date this is Hatterline once again the same font that I used here just without the offset to it excuse me and this is just sample text like I said you can do this if you'd like you don't have to it's optional what I am going to do is um, I'll just let's see I'm just going to move this group it move it back in I don't want to waste too much time with this video is already pretty lengthy so you just um, can print that out and cut it on your machine also that's pretty much it thank you